Hi guys, and welcome to my DIY channel. My name is Annalie, if you're new here, and in today's video, we will be doing the very last of my Christmas projects for the year 2020, and the last Friend Hop Friday of the year, coming up. This first project was inspired by a photo that my husband found on the internet. He brought this to me and said, hey, let's make this. This project is super awesome because my husband helped me build this entire project. And you can see that it was a very, very snowy day. It was a snowy Saturday, so we both went outside and we worked in the garage together all day, you guys. He helped me so much. So we decided to do this little Christmas tree box stand, I guess, that goes under the tree. And so I did the sanding of all of these little paint stick sized boards. And then as you saw, he used the table saw to cut the box down to size and then we put these paint sticks on the outside of the box to trim the box and we just stapled this together using our staple gun. Once the edges were all trimmed out, we wanted to do crisscrosses in the middle. So right here you can see that he is measuring the middle right here so he knows the angle cuts that he needs to make. And so once he does that, he takes it over the chop saw and cuts on the angles so that they will fit perfect to make that crisscross. It's also very, very cold in Idaho right now, so all of that steam is just us breathing as we film this project. He used that piece of wood to make sure that he was getting these two pieces on the side straight so that they measured up into a perfect X, just like this. And we did this to all four sides of the box. You guys, he's so great. He made every piece seriously fit like a glove. Thank you. All right, so then I went ahead and the base of the box, I just, I stained this using the color Jacobian because I thought that it would look, you know, it would match all of my decor, of course. And it looked really, really good. We did put a little bit of varnish on the top that makes the wood look a little bit aged. I kind of liked the distressing that this did to the wood. It kind of gave it a little gray blue hue to it. And then we went ahead and we used some white chalk paint to paint those outer edges. So the trim and the crisscrosses, we painted those white with Waverly white chalk paint. And then when everything was dry, I just used my sander to rough it up and make it look really rustic. guys, it's the last Friend Hop Friday of the year. This has been such an amazing season and I have been so blessed to be able to participate in Heidi Sambol's Friend Hop Friday. If you are new here and you don't know how the hop works, be sure to check out the description box down below. There will be a link to the girl who is next in line for the hop. Her video will be linked down below. And after you watch her video, she will have a link in her description box and so on and so forth for the next person in the hop. Once you go full circle and watch everybody's video in the hop, be sure to leave a comment on each video along the way and it will enter you into this giveaway for this Amazon gift card, you guys. I know we're getting pretty close to Christmas, but hey, if you're like me, I haven't even started Christmas shopping yet and it's um, like mid-December and I haven't even started. Truly, like my Christmas cards come this week and my neighbor gifts aren't done, my friends gifts aren't done, I bought nothing for my children, Santa is failing. But don't worry, there is still time to get your Christmas shopping done. And I would love to have a gift card so that I could go get everything done, especially all in one place. And it ships to you. It's a win-win. So be sure to enter the giveaway by leaving a comment on my video down below and then leaving a comment on everybody's videos. Also, if you'd like to, please like the videos and consider subscribing if you'd like if you would like to stick around. All right guys, so let's get right back into the video. For this project, we're going to be using these pillow covers to make our own pillow on the back. I am we're using some of my fall pillows and I want to show you how we're going to do this. So we're going to make a stencil using our silhouette. So here you can see that I have selected the image that we're going to use. And then over there, this is the button that I push. For some reason right here, it did not show the 
little box that was pulled up maybe because my desk copy is a dinosaur but you can see that i mirror the image and that is the most important part so if you have a machine just find a way to mirror your image because you need it to be backwards just like this so it's the same size you move it over where you need it and now we are ready to cut we're going to cut it out just like this and you will see why this is so important this is one of my favorite diys to do and i really don't do it that often here on my channel because it is kind of a learning curve and so but i really want to do it more so here you can see that we're going ahead and weeding out the vinyl and i'm only weeding out a little bit and you will see why because i'm going to be doing this in different colors and so i don't want the other part to be revealed until i'm ready to do a different color so the first color we're going to be using is black and so I'm only weeding out the part of the pillow that we will be doing black. So using some transfer tape, I'm putting it onto this screen here. This screen is by the Speedball brand. Once it's in place, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna use some masking tape. And yes, this is absolutely essential. Please do not skip this step because otherwise you will have a very good chance of getting paint in places that you do not want paint to be. So always trim this with painter's tape. It works the best flip your screen over this is speedball paint you can get all of this from amazon i can have this stuff linked down below if you guys are interested also the inspiration of this who i learned like all my tips and tricks is a girl that i follow on instagram her account is called pigskin and pigtails and it is so cute she's amazing and i will leave her account linked down below for you guys to see that as well so what you do is you put your paint on the screen when you're ready put your pillow down make sure you put something in between your pillow so it doesn't press through I used a small scraper. This is not the traditional scraper that it comes with. This is actually my squeegee scraper from my silhouette, but it's small enough that it worked out perfectly. So I only wanted the black to be on the farm fresh part. So then you can see now we are weeding out the trees because we're gonna be using some green speedball paint. So now I'm gonna line up the farm fresh words again, and now we're gonna put some green in these areas. So you can see why I wanted to use the small scraper, because I didn't want to go over any other area that I didn't want to be green. When you are scraping this, please push very, very, very hard. You need to go over it several times so that it actually gets into your fabric for whatever you're screening. So then we weeded out the word Christmas, now we're doing red, and like I said, put enough paint on to really cover it and just go over this several times and push this down into your fabric. When you lift up, lift up very, very carefully so that it doesn't get anywhere that you don't want the paint to be. Don't worry, we are gonna reveal it. I just moved on to this pillow so you could see how we do this one. This one is just gonna be all red. You can see that giant squeegee. That works great when you're doing just all one color that's actually the speedball squeegee that it comes with. And so where I did this merry and bright sign, I went ahead and just did it all red and squeegeed it all into place. And like I said, I pushed it into it several times. And here we have our custom screen printed pillows. You also can do this on shirts, clothing, any type of fabric basically. And it's super fun to do it and make it your own. For this next project, we are using this really thin piece of scrap wood and I ran my sander over the top of it to remove the finish. It kind of had a really smooth finish. See how thin this wood is? And it kind of made it look super rustic and I love the raw, natural look of this wood. So I went ahead and I used my ruler to measure out a point like this to give me a little triangle because we we're gonna be making a little Christmas tree sign. And I used my jigsaw to get these pieces cut out and I end up cutting out three total. We're actually not gonna be using the piece that I cut out, those two leftover trim pieces, I used my chop saw to cut them off. And then I sanded the edges down because I loved the look of putting these two pieces together to make a tree with the line down the center of the tree. Once these were all sanded and distressed, I love the look. Look at this natural look that it has right here. 
So I'm putting them together like this because I loved that little gap in between them. So you can see that I used those outer edges and just turned them around and it came together to make these trees. The two outer ones right there, sorry, the two side ones right there are the smaller ones and then the middle one, it's not even the middle, but it will be in the middle is the tallest one, but the one on the far left is the tallest. So then using these little tumbling tower blocks that you can get from the Dollar Tree, I wanted to make a little square base for them. And so I went ahead and I stapled each one of these together so that it could just go together really, really quick. I love stapling because I'm really impatient and I hate to wait for glue to dry, but gluing these would work perfectly too. But I went ahead and I made three squares using these tumbling tower blocks to be the bases of my trees. Then using some popsicle sticks, I went ahead and used some hot glue and wood glue to glue my trees together. Using some wood stain in the color Jacobian, I go ahead and I get those three little square bases stained and that is the only thing that I stain for this project. Shocking. Again, with my amazing husband helping me, we went ahead and we cut this smaller piece of wood. It measures 19 inches long and it's very thin. We marked out where we wanted the bases of the trees to be and then put these X's on so that we could drill these holes right here because we wanted to be able to put some pieces of scrap wood like this up to be what will hold up our trees. Now you won't see those holes, so don't panic that we're putting a square peg in a round hole, basically. So using this device right here to make sure that we have a square peg, like that it's standing square, we went ahead and we stood these up and we filled these with hot glue so that they're not going anywhere and they are spaced exactly where we want them to be. We measured them out with a measuring tape. Now it's time to go ahead and get this painted because I am going for a very neutral look. I really wanted like almost kind of like a silver and gold, but not really gold. I don't know. I just wanted like a really neutral, natural look for Christmas because everything I've done so far is red and green. So I went ahead and using some Waverly White chalk paint, I got this entire base painted. I added some brown paint to distress it and then sanded it really good. Used some hot glue and wood glue to get these little bases glued down and then also glued my trees on in place with the tallest tree being in the middle. Then what you don't see here is I used a little bit of floral moss from the Dollar Tree and I glued that down into the bases which covered up those holes that we didn't want to see and then I went ahead and added a little jute twine bow and wrapped them with some of this garland that you can get from the Dollar Tree and that is it for this very neutral Christmas project. I love that I changed it up a little bit. I think it's very pretty. This project is literally so quick and easy that if you blink, you will miss it. Using these two pieces of scrap wood, I went ahead and sanded down the edges. I put a coat of Jacobian stain on them, let them dry, and then painted them with some Waverly White chalk paint. Sanded them down really good, distressed the edges, and added a little bit of brown to distress them as well, just to make them look really, really rustic. So basically this was already ready to go. I just had to do stain and paint to distress it, sanded it really good, and then using some ribbon that I got from a craft store a long time ago, I just tied a very beautiful bow to make these look like two little packages that you could see standing. And like I said, very fast and easy to make, a great way to use up any scrap wood, and they just add such a cute little side piece to your home decor. And for this last project, we're gonna be making a cute little Christmas card holder for all of the amazing Christmas cards that you guys have been sending me. Thank you so much to everyone who has sent our family a Christmas card. I cannot tell you the joy and happiness that it has brought to our family and my children especially. They have loved opening up your Christmas cards. I will get some Christmas cards out. We are a little bit behind this year in mailing them out because I was waiting for our cards to be made basically at Walmart. But our kids are making Christmas card signs and we are so excited to get them sent out. 
But we are using these two pieces of very, very thin wood. I went ahead and I got them stained with some Jacobian stain. And then I used some wood glue and hot glue to get them glued together on the back with some popsicle sticks. Using some wood beads that I got from Amazon and some jute twine that I got from the Dollar Tree, I'm making a tiny little tassel garland right here to put under the top of the sign just to embellish it a little bit at the very top of this sign. I made these tassels out of jute twine. I made five of them quick and easy just by wrapping the jute around my fingers and tying it off. Using my cutting machine, I went ahead and I just cut out the words Cards of Cheer in white vinyl. I love the term Merry Mail, but I also thought of doing something just a little bit different because Merry Mail is super popular. And so I thought Cards of Cheer was really cute. Actually, okay, my husband came up with it. He gets all the credit. Using this little saw right here, I notched the wood on either side. I marked it first and then kind of just sawed a little notch into this because then I was able to put the jute twine tassel into that little notch so that it stayed exactly where I wanted it to go and glued it onto the back. You guys, this was very effective. It worked super good and I love that it keeps the tassel the tassel. I love that it keeps the tassel garland exactly where I want it to be right under the words of this sign. Getting all glued together, it's all ready to go. Now it's time to embellish it. I went ahead and I used some floral and some garland that you can get from the Dollar Tree. And I made this little swag using some of this holly berry and some pine cones. And I glued this to the bottom of the sign to add some Christmas embellishment. Once that was done, I used some jute twine and some baker's twine to wrap this sign around really good so that I could use this as my strings to hold my cards. And I wanted the edges of the twine to not be raw, so I put some bows at the edges where I started wrapping it with twine. And then, just using some little clothespins that you can pick up from the Dollar Tree, I went ahead and added those to the strings, and it is ready to hang all of your Christmas cards. for watching you guys this has been such a fun Christmas season so this is my first holiday season on YouTube also I want to say thank you again to so many of you who have sent me a Christmas card it is truly uplifted our family my kids have been so excited and like I said we will get Christmas cards out to people someday I'm still waiting for my Christmas cards to come in they're supposed to be here sometime this week so hopefully we can get them in the mail and mail to you before Christmas if not then who who doesn't need a little cheer after Christmas right like who doesn't love some cards in January it's kind of like hey Christmas is still here kind of like we're still thinking about happiness Enjoy. all right guys so in lieu of Christmas next week I wanted this end segment to of course be focused on Christmas this story that I'm gonna share with you guys today is fairly commonly known so you may already know it leave a comment down below if you already know this story but I hope that you guys enjoy it and I absolutely love it during World War one which as everybody if you can remember World War one was a brutal war two countries are at war with each other Germany and Belgium actually three Germany Belgium and ooh, this is a rough rough war. World War I was brutal. These soldiers were promised that the war would be over by Christmas. So here they are, it's Christmas, and this war is not over. They are in trenches. Literally, they have dug trenches, and they're on either side with just this area where they shoot each other, and there's a whole bunch of their dead, 
in this area and they're in the trenches. They're freezing. Honestly, the weather is more of a threat to them at this point than the other side. And they're just pretty miserable. And it's Christmas Eve. They asked for a ceasefire. They asked for a peace truce. They wanted a truce. And they were denied the truce by the government. If I am saying this wrong, please correct me down below because I'm going off of what I've seen from YouTube. And so I could be saying this wrong. So definitely fact check me if you need to. As I understood it, they asked for a truce. They didn't get the truce, but they still, it was Christmas Eve. Nobody really felt like fighting. So it's night, it's dark. And one side, start singing the song Silent Night. And they're singing it so beautifully that it's just calming to the other side. And the other side chimes in and starts singing as well. Now there's a couple accounts that say that they sang Silent Night together. Some say, like one account just says that like they go back and forth with different songs. There's actually a show on Netflix. I will have that link down below for you guys too. They end up singing and feel this peace. And they, they basically call this self-proclaimed Christmas truce just for Christmas Eve. They're in these trenches and if they even just like peek their head up over the trench, they'll get shot. Like it is brutal. But as they start singing and they feel this like calming peace from the Christmas music and the Christmas spirit, they start popping up over the trenches a little bit on both sides and neither side is shooting. Eventually they end up getting up walking out and meeting in the middle of the battlefield and they have the best night with each other. They get what little supplies and what little goodies that they had for themselves to share for Christmas. So champagne, chocolate, things like that. They share photos with one another of each other's family. In some accounts, they help clear their dead. They help each other clear their dead from the battlefield. They call the Christmas troops because the spirit of Christmas helped people who were at war. People who were literally fighting and killing each other were able to come together for one night because they felt the Christmas spirit. I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and whatever trials you're facing, whatever troubles you're going through, whatever battles you are fighting, I hope that you will have a Christmas truce. I hope you will be able to find peace in your heart, in your home, and in your life. I'm not sure if all of our struggles are just gonna magically go away as soon as we cross over into the year 2021. Chances are we're probably gonna have a rough couple years, I'm assuming, I don't know, I could be wrong, but I'm hoping that we can all reflect on the year 2020 and look back and try to find the good in what we have endured this year. Hopefully we have grown, we are stronger, we have done hard things, right? Everybody reach up and pat yourself on the back right now and say, I can do hard things. I survived 2020. I wish you all a very merry and peaceful Christmas. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye guys. There are two companies, tangent. What was I even, what was I saying? What was the point of that? Oh.